important thing in neuroprotection is to prevent the infarct from being as large as it can be by not performing the appropriate acute stroke therapies. So our first mission in taking care of stroke is limit the size of infarction, limit the amount of disability. So that's effective acute stroke therapies. Whether it's thrombolysis or it's thrombectomy, that's the most effective strategy. Every strategy after that is likely going to be less effective. So part of the issues in neuroprotection, and we think about neuroprotection, we're not just talking about protecting the brain from further disability, I'm sorry, from further infarction. Your, your, again, your best method there is effective acute stroke therapies. The neuroprotection is one realm where we're trying to give medications or other therapies, cooling has been tried, other medications, um, other approaches to try and limit the size of infarction through other therapies that aren't necessarily thrombolytic or thrombectomy. But there's another realm that people don't often talk about, which is critically important, that's neurorestoration. Can we give medication therapies early on after acute ischemic stroke that might help to regenerate tissue and reduce disability? So those, those therapies actually hold to me more promise and more excitement than some of the drugs we typically have thought about for neuroprotection. I've been involved in so many neuroprotection studies over time, so many attempts, so many reviews of uh, drugs that looked good in animal models, uh, even models that are non-human animal models like primate models that look good in that environment who have uh, failed in phase three clinical trials. And there have been so many studies that obviously the uh, NIH has come up with a whole classification criteria of what studies might be viable or what agents might be viable to move on to next phase stage development because there's been so much investment over time in these trials and none of them have really shown success. Neurorestoration may hold more promise, whether it's use of deep brain stimulation or cell therapies that may help to restore function. These seem like uh, more promising, more viable options, more excitement surrounding them than the neuroprotection area to me now. Because again, the most effective neuroprotection strategy limit the size of the infarct with effective thrombolysis and thrombectomy.